Namo Siddhanam, Jai Jinendra everyone. Um, welcome to GeneratorCenter.com's uh, 20th anniversary celebrations. And as part of the celebrations, we are here at the Generatage Festival 2022. This is the fourth session, which is part of our uh, Generatage Festival uh, celebrations and which is part of Jainism abroad. And uh, so as part of the sessions, today we have uh, Jainism abroad as the theme. And uh, we are here to hear out from Dr. Sulek C. Jain about uh, Jain is future and uh, I mean the status and future of Jaina studies in the Western world. Before that, here is a quick introduction about our website, genetiscenters.com. Uh, just to give you an overview about who we are and what we are. Uh, the website was founded in uh, 2002, launched on 26th May. And uh, it was founded by my father, Dr. H. Parshmat and myself. And uh, it was uh, launched by late Dr. M.D. Vasantaraj sir, one of the renowned Jain scholars and uh, practice scholars. And we have publications related to Jain history, heritage, temples, archaeology, places of interest, news, and other details. And we have what 3,000 to 3,500 plus pages of research information on Jainism and Jain heritage. And uh, we are ranked well for around 3,500 keywords across the world on different countries. Then moving on, uh, what is that we are we have put together over the past 20 years, which we can always say like being young James, how we have done a difference to the community or how we have been able to do even a minuscule of it to the community. We have been involved in many heritage conservation projects related to temples, inscriptions, idols, and others. We have been part of the first Korean documentary on Jainism, work with MBC channel. We have contributed the images on Jain way of life to the first book in the Slovakian language. And then uh, we have also supported many national and international researchers with articles, images, and research material who are researching in different uh, universities of the world. And uh, we have been involved in the Bahubali uh, Mahamastaka Abhishekha Mahotsavas, and at Shravana Bhargava, Karkala and Venu, particularly with Shravana Bhargava in 2006 and 2018. And uh, I have been part of the organizing committee over there. And we have been uh, also spreading awareness about the attack on Jain Munis at, the, uh, at Tamil Nadu in 2004, spreading awareness about the attack on Jain Muni at Girnar Hill in 2013. We also protested against the wrong portrayal of Lord Bahubali in Chakra Ratna drama then. In 2018, as part of the Shrana Bhargava Bahubali Mahamastaka Vishaka Mahotsav, we came up with a huge pavilion on Jain heritage and archaeology in collaboration with Digambar Jain Mahasabha and the Tirtha Samrakshini Mahasabha. We had about 85 to 90 boats about Jainism abroad, Jainism in India, and Salekana. And it was well received with over 250,000 people visiting it in a record span of 15 days. Then we also were part of the Salekana movement in 2016. We worked as part of the team which worked on the petition at the Supreme Court of India. We worked towards providing inscriptional references on the practices and various aspects related to the Salekana and linking it to the Jain philosophy. Then we had also had the privilege of, I mean, working with the University of Madras, thanks to Dr. Pedashna Ma'am, where we were created, uh, we, we worked on uh, webinars related to Jain history and uh, heritage. Even last year, we also conducted uh, a series of eight webinars related to Jain uh, history and heritage. Then uh, I have authored a book called Jain Yatra, which is a collection of articles on Karnataka's Jain heritage. It has won the coveted uh, M.A.J. Chandra Award a well-known Jain and practice scholar who is there with us even on the session here. Um, it's a, in a, again a proud, proud moment. Along with that, I have been involved very closely. Along with that, my, our team over here, most of the youngsters who are there who are part of Jainity Centers, they've been part of the Young Jains movement in India. I have been focusing mainly on South India and Karnataka. We, the rest of the team members, many of them, almost 80 to 90% of our team members, they've been part of the Young Jains India movement 
across India. Then now again, we are back to the main um, attraction of this session. That is a exclusive uh, session by Dr. Sulek Uncle uh, about status and future of gene studies in Western countries. Before we begin, I think whenever we speak about the study of Jainism, what is happening in different parts of India and different parts of the world, we see a lot of Jain chairs on the verge of being closed or getting closed in different parts of India, particularly in different universities. However, on the contrary, we have been able to make a very different uh, uh, progress over there in the Western countries, thanks to Sulek Ankal and his team, uh, who are part of the Jaina organization, who have taken very keen interest towards promoting the study of Jainism in, a, in an academic platforms. And uh, we have seen the things, the results that are evident on many uh, universities and they taking up many activities related to Jainism, particularly the academic studies. And what is that that has happened over the years? Where do we stand in different countries? And what is the way forward is what we are going to hear from Dr. Sulek Uncle. And with this, I will uh, hand it over to Antriksh. Antriksh, over to you. Thank you, Nitin Bhai. Uh, uh, on behalf of Jain Heritage Centers, uh, we welcome Sri Sulek Ji Jain. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, being here today. And uh, so let's let's talk about Dr. Sul uh, Sulek Ji. He is PhD in mechani mechanical engineering uh, and is also founder, co-founder of many or more than a dozen of organizations and institutions in North America. Sir, do share your insight about co-founding because it takes a lot of lot of efforts to create something rather than sustaining, right? So he's also past secretary and president of Federation of Jain Associations in North America, the JANA, uh, Jain Society of Houston, Jain, so Jain Center of Cincinnati, Dayton, and several other organizations. He is published widely uh, on his research articles and books, which goes around various different topics, engineering, Jainism, Ahimsa, and Gandhi's thoughts, Gandhi's life. His latest book, is uh, an ahimsa crisis uh, you decide is downloadable is is available on isjs website the international school for jain studies that is isjs which he co-founded in 2004 with dr shoganji jain has been instrumental in changing the face of jain academic studies in north america and europe he taught at several universities in us uh, including mit as guest lecturer Canada, UK, and India. He is retired in 1998 from GE Aircraft Engineers Engines, GE Aircraft Engines in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's authored several dozen technical papers, nine US and international patents in technology. Wow, it's uh, like, you know, it's a jaw dropping thing. Uh, I repeat again, nine US and international patents in technology. So, uh, you know, exploring all his life, the technology, uh, he's here uh, during his life and after retirement, he's been working extensively in promoting the technology of conquerors, the Jan, uh, uh, Jan uh, philosophy, Jan math. And uh, Dr. Jan has been recently conferred with Jana Ratna Award. Apart from that, he definitely has dozens, and dozens of commercial, professional and religious awards. Uh, which he hasn't mentioned. That's a uh, humble nature of Sir. He's currently living with his wife, Srimati Ravi Jain. Uh, they are uh, in uh, Henderson, which is a suburb of Las Vegas. And uh, they are connected with a lot of Indian and non-Indian organizations like vegan societies and promoting the Jain cultures in various different capacities. Uh, Dr. Sulekji, we are very glad to have you. Uh, we have heard a lot about you from Manish ji. In fact, uh, Dr. Shugan ji Jain, when he came to Chennai, uh, he was talking he was talking a lot about you. And uh, over to you, Dr. Sulek ji. Thank you so much for being here. Jai Jainendra, Namaste. Uh, especially, I want to pay my <coughs> gratitude 
to my younger brother, R.P. Jain. 1989, I was elected the president of Jaina. In Toronto. I took seven weeks off from my work, come to India. Jaina was not known. Nobody even knew me and I hardly anybody I knew in India. It was R.P. Jain who introduced me from north to south to all the four sets. He took me around. He spent seven weeks with me. So, R.P. Bhai, mera namaskar, pranam, bhot, bhot dhanyavad. Nobody knew me, but you made me world famous. Thank you. So, now, first of all, I want to thank what a beautiful talk that we just heard from Dr. Manish Mehta. I call him my son. He always calls me father. So what a gratitude to me. Manish, you always make me proud. You are a walking encyclopedia. And I hope we had more than one Manish hmm? because you do so much all the time. So thank you. It's a beautiful talk. So, uh, Manish, about six months ago, got the one of the highest innovation award uh, from the three big automotive company. So again, you just not just make Jenna and all of us Jen proud, but you also have so much influence all over this uh, technology. Thank you. Uh, Nathan Bai, very proud. I did not know what work you have been doing for the last 20 years. I have seen your pictures, but I am absolutely thrilled. Mm -hmm what you have been doing. What I am saying is that during the last few years, Jains are talking among Jamsers. Jain academics, uh, Jain academic, uh, JAS, Jain Academic Council of Scholars, your Heritage Foundation, and many other organizations are, not talk, are now talking from north to south, from various uh, four sects. Otherwise, many years ago, I know, even, even two, two scholars or two leaders of the Jain community will not talk to each other of various things. Uh, sometime I found, observed, it's, it's, it's in fact, you can talk to Muslims, but very difficult to talk to another Jain of a different sect. So thank you, you are opening up the door, so make me proud. Uh, the work that you have done, Nitin, and the Jain heritage, and yesterday we had the I heard from Pakistan. I would like to suggest that all of this work should be connected with Jaina E Library. Okay. The reason I'm saying is Jaina E Library is fantastic, tremendous. And someday, Nathan, if I may request you, please request uh, Praveen K. Shah and uh, Manish can make that happen. He will give you how big a treasure house he has created in Jaina E Library millions and millions of pages, many, many thousand books. So we need to put every information that we are creating hmm, on Jana Eve's website because it's used by thousands of scholars all over the world. Having said that, let me now uh, go back and your work, by the way, in Korea and Slovakia is very commendable and I'd like to know more about it, okay? So that we can, we can practically you know, gain from it. What I'm going to share with you is that talk should have been given much better than my, me by Manish Mehta. The reason is he's the vice chair of the Jena Academic Committee and he will be, okay? What I've done a little bit, Manish will do 10 times more than what I have been able to do. So thank you. Uh, I've been here in this country 56 years. When I came to this country, nobody had even heard of Jainism. Many times, uh, many people say, are you a Muslim? Honestly. So that is what the knowledge about Jainism was. Uh, Dr. Padnav Jaini, whom you know, he was the, one of the top most Jain scholar. He came to teach at University of California, Berkeley, one of the very top university in, uh, in the whole world. And he wrote that in 1970, even the scholars had not heard of Jainism at the University of California, Berkeley. What a pity, okay? We have been too much confined within our small community, within small India. So we need to share this beauty 
eh, this culture, this tradition with the rest of the world. Okay. Now let me, um, if you can, uh, Nathan, if you, if you can put my slides, please. So what I'm going to share with you is uh, how we started on this great journey of sharing our tradition with the rest of the world, especially I'm talking the academia. Next slide, please. Nathan, please change. Question come back. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Jainism was not known. And still, even 10 years ago, Jainism was not much known. I'm talking about academia, so please focus with me on academia. Even five years ago, we established a chair in one of the universities in, in America here. And the, after a very thorough search, the person they appointed, this effect, the person they appointed to that position was not only a non-Jain, but he knew very little about Jainism. He was a scholar with a PhD in Hinduism. So as soon as we came to know, we went to the university and said, what did you do? He said, well, Jainism is a part of Hinduism. And here is a Jain Hindu scholar who had done PhD from Harvard or somewhere. Since he knows Hinduism, he can teach Jainism too. That was the lack of knowledge, even in academia. I'm talking five years ago, maybe four years ago. So we need to change that. We modified our contract with them, said Jainism is a, not an offshoot of Hinduism or Buddhism or any other religion. It's an independent religion. So you can see Jainism was very known, very little known. Study of Jain Dharma in the Jain community has not been on their academic strain. And the, it was practically very much lagging behind Hinduism and Buddhism and even to Sikhism. Even to the extent that Jainism was treated as a footnote tradition. You know, when you write an article, you want to write something, you make a comment footnote. That's where Jainism was. And there were many, many reasons. There were not many scholars who can teach Jainism. They were not knowledgeable about Jainism. How do you start? Okay, and naturally, if there are no scholars, nothing is offered, there are no students. So that is the environment, I would say, about 10 years ago. Okay, next slide, please. So now the question comes back in this country, why do you teach Jainism? And I give you two comments from two Jain professors. One is from University of California, University of Texas in Austin probably one of the largest universities in the world, at one campus, 55,000 students, okay? And there is a professor, Donald Davis. He is the chair of the department, and he has been teaching Jainism for probably 25 years. He's also a very good scholar of practice and Sanskrit. At one time in his class, there were 103 students in Jainism. So I went to him and I said, Donald, why you teach Jainism? Very good question. In 55,000 students, and probably 90, 95% come from Judeo-Christian background. He said very, very easily, he said, Jain Dharma offers a different pair of eyeglasses or a prism through which to view the world, its problem and opportunity. And that is why I teach Jainism at the University of Texas in Austin. Why did he say that? Out of 55,000 students, probably 50,000 students come from Judeo-Christian, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They never heard of Jainism. They, have, they look at the whole world problem from their own perspective, not for non-violence, not for anekant vad, not for prasparo graho jivanam, all of those things. He said that I want to provide them a different look, different eyeglasses. Another one, you will see here, this is uh, Professor Brian Donaldson. She is a Bhagwan Parshnath, chaired professor in Jain Studies at the University of California, Irvine, Texas, in California. 
she is a young jain scholar highly professional highly academic and 10 years ago maybe 12 years ago she was applying for international school jain studies to come and spend 5 weeks in india or 6 weeks in india in her application at that time she was not a professor she was not a phd she wrote that why i want to teach why i want to know jainism and why i'm sharing this these words are profound she said i want to hear everyone talking about jainism this is the on the application she wrote i want to hear everyone talking about jainism i want religion and philosophy department teaching it i want ecologist and agriculture technicians exploring its sustainability model i want animal ethicist investigating it i want metaphysicians engaging its textual and cosmological claims i want economics department examining its charitable giving and solvency i want diplomats non violent practitioners and just worth and mongers they looking at there is a viable political jainism is a viable, uh, viable political way of life i want it on the lips of every discipline colliding with existing wisdom challenging epistemological strongholds and generally throwing a wrench into any sentiment that would dismiss as impractical and possibility of human living as a fundamentally different manner on our current and future wow can we find a better inspiration i could not this is why jainism has to come out from its own cocoon from our temples and sthanaks and places of worship and let's spread it all over the world next slide please so we have a jena academic liaison committee there are 30 amazing members of the jena academic committee dr manish mehta is the vice chair till last year i was the chair for probably 14 years i don't want to be chair for all my life and uh, i'm glad manish and dr nitin we have another nitin here dr nitin mehta okay so we have a clone here nitin your clone so uh, he is the chair of this committee and this was created in 2009 to promote jain academic studies in american university next slide please next slide what is the purpose or what did we do this to establish dsa with academic institutions in north america and elsewhere for promoting and those institutions that are willing to teach jainism okay and also of course awareness and when we go to universities these are temples of knowledge these are gnan mandirs okay there are physical temple for worship but these are temples of knowledge enhance awareness of our religion and train and support scholars and connect jain communities and universities because after all we have to connect both the both these links universities with the jain community this was why the jaina academic as a committee was established next slide please so when we did that then objective was that we need to establish various centers for at universities and encourage and facilitate research by providing jain materials we can't just be providing the money we need to provide them books we provide them scholars we provide them many other things spread jain principle to common people and starting from zero we had none nothing okay 15 years ago 20 years ago even 10 years ago our journey has just started okay next slide please now I'll, i'll walk you through where we are uh what have we done when we have nothing the first ingredient is that you educate and train scholars okay which we have been doing and you will see since 2004 2005 with Inter- international school for jain studies to create to train and educate scholars so if we have the scholars which i will tell you that we have then we have to come to the jain community who have the money who have the wheels and muscles to do the philanthropy that was our second step third was start dialogue with the universities and colleges in north america hey 
universities, we have these trained scholars who have done PhDs from Harvard and University of Chicago, Yale, and many other places, which 10 years ago we did not have. We have the philanthropists, we have the money. Let's start a dialogue. And then, then we negotiate a very tough terms, very encompassing memorandum of understanding. This is a legal document, very extensive. And then we fund those chairs, then monitor the faculty and stay engaged. We just don't leave them there and then connect with the Jain Center. This is what we have been doing. These are the steps we took. Next, next slide, please. So very quickly, as you see uh, on the left-hand side, Jaina Academic, uh, IES Jazz, International School for Jain Study. By the way, if IES Jazz would not have been established, probably we would not have been talking what you are going to hear from me during the next 15, 20 minutes. So trained scholars. Now on the right-hand side, you see we are signing up for a chair at University of California, Ar Irvine. Okay, that is the first chair that we established many years ago, 2014. And then we also been connecting with many, many Jains, Jain interested scholars. So we bring them to Jain centers. We talk to them, we meet with them. We did them with at, in Atlanta, in Chicago, in, in uh, San Francisco, many other places. You develop a relationship. Next slide, please. Next slide. So where are we? In this short journey of maybe 10 years practically, we have nine endowed chairs. And the word endowed, you will be asking, what does that mean? Endowed means permanent. Endowed means forever. Endowed means as long as the university is there, these chairs will remain, okay? Okay, the money is there, they will not run out, and these chairs will be there permanently. Nine endowed professorship, little lower level, okay, but they are very practically similar. Then six postdoctoral fellowships. These are the people who have done PhDs in Jainism or Jain related field. Just like we have done your MD, medical doctorate, you need internship. These, similarly, these two doctors, uh, students, when they come out, they need one or two years of teaching experience, research experience before they can be hired. So we created for them six postdoctoral fellowships. And where we were not able to establish all of this uh, above, then we have created nine lectureships and adjunct professorships. Twelve scholars are doing PhDs in, in Jainism in USA and Canada alone. And I'll tell you five of them are we are financially supporting them too. It takes about $40,000 per year per student uh, to be doing PhD. $40,000 probably maybe about 35, 30 lakh rupees. We have end, four endowed lectures. And when we started doing this during the last 10 years, many universities said, wow, Jainism was not even known, who knew? So. 17 universities on their own, not with our money, but with their own resources, they have started classes and courses in Jainism, okay, on their own. So if you count all of this, probably it will, it will be sum up to about 50 universities. And while we are doing this, uh, I tell you about three or four years ago, I was talking to Professor Anne Monias at University at Harvard University. She was a Sanskrit scholar, by the way, she died a couple of years ago. And she said to me, Sulekhji, you are creating these scholars, but they need to go to the Mool Agam, Mool sources of Jainism, okay, which is in Prakrit and Sanskrit. So we need to train scholars in both these languages. Simply, English language will not be sufficient. So we established these uh, uh, scholarships. And uh, so we have six trained scholars from American universities in Prakrit who have spent nine months to 12, uh, 12 months in India to study Prakrit. And right now, uh, four fully paid scholarships in Prakrit, and I'll show you a little bit uh, later on. And we are also offering scholarships in Brazil and in Ukraine. Of course, Ukraine is under war. 
Uh, so, but we have taught too many scholars who have gone to IIJ. Next slide, please. So this was just a brief overview, nutshell. Next slide. So timeline, 2004, again, you have heard many times, International School for Jain Studies was established. Sole purpose for universities only. It was a university based. And 800 scholars from all these 30 universities came to India because we, India, we made India a classroom an experience of place of learning, okay? We cannot create the similar environment in any other countries about Jainism. So 2010, we established the first professorship at Florida International University, but that position was filled in 2012 by Professor Stephen Vos. <clears throat> 2015, we first established two chairs, <clears throat> University of California, Davis, this is the picture, and University of California, Irvine. And then the third was established at University of California, Riverside in 2017. And from 2018 onward, uh, we established many, many other places which you'll see, I'll talk a little bit quickly. And even we are talking in Israel and many other countries. Next, please. Next slide. So quickly, we have, uh, one beauty that you will see as you, uh, I walk you through, <clears throat> these big donors, and I'm talking really big donors, uh, we have probably given more than 150 crore rupees of our own. They did not want their name after these chairs. So there's no chair after Sulek Jain or Manish Mehta or anybody, even though I did not give much money anyway. So. They decided from the very beginning that these chairs should be named after our Chobis Tirthankar. Only in few cases where there was a single donor, and I say single donor for the entire chair, if that person decides to put his or her name, that's okay. But if more than one person are contributing that money, then the name will be a Tirthankar. This is a very new paradigm. So, Parshnath Presidential Chair at the University of California, Irvine. You will see the name who are professors who are occupying, Brian Donaldson. Mohini Jain Presidential Chair at the University of California. Mohini Jain is a part of us in the, of the Jain Academic Days Committee. At that time, she did not know about what anybody else Jain was doing. So she probably on her own took this initiative. Our own Jain, Dr. Lena Danani, she did a PhD in Jainism from Yale. She's a Jain. She's occupying Shrimad Rachan Chair at University of California, Riverside, Dr. Anna Beisel. Bhagwan Vimana Chair at University of California, Santa Barbara, that's vacant. It need to be filled, probably will be advertised pretty soon. And can you put this slide a little bit up, uh, Nitin? Bhagwan, oh, okay, anyway. Uh, Bhagwan Suvidana Chair at California State Long Beach, uh, Professor Bill, uh, Purushottam Billy Moria is the interim, and this chair uh, advertisement position will be announced within the next two months. Advertisement to fill the position. Next, please. Then we have all these uh, Bhagwan Shantinath endowed chair at Cal Poly University in Pomana. And they have already appointed uh, Dr. Ashwara Kumar uh, from uh, Stanford. Shri Anandath endowed chair in Jain Studies, University of Wisconsin. This position will be advertised soon. It's a vacant. Endowed chair. This is another new endowed chair in Jain and Hindu Dharma studies combined. Okay. Jains and Hindus came together and put half and half money. And uh, at California State University in Fresno, California, Dr. Vina Howard is the chair. Why I'm mentioning this? Today, not only we have Jain temples, Nitin, we also have 23 combined Hindu and Jain temples. Okay, including in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, where I knew, uh, live, the temple over here is a combined Hindu and Jain temple. So what we could do in those places, why couldn't we do at university level? Okay, so this is the first chair combined in Hindu and Jainism. And similarly, we did that at four or five other universities 
where we did combined with, with Jainism and Sikhism. Okay, so trying to break this wall between various religions. Okay, Gurudev Shri Kanji Swami, endowed chair at University of Connecticut at Stores, Connecticut. Program has started. Okay, next, next slide, please. Uh, Bhagwan Mahavir Professorship at Florida International University. Uh, this is a, a, there was a Stephen Voss. Uh, he is not there anymore. So they just appointed Dr. Lee. She did her PhD in Jainism from uh, Yale. Uh, Bhagwan Rishabh Dev Professorship at the University of Texas in North in Dallas. Uh, Leah Kalmanson. You can see Bhagwan Mallinath Professorship in Loyola Marymount University. Now, pay your attention to the name who is occupying this position is Dr. Christopher Jan Miller. His name was previously, a year ago, Christopher Patrick Miller. And officially, he changed his name officially from Patrick to Jan. Okay? He's a vegan. We can talk about him all day long. He's such a fantastic person. Bhagwan Ajitnath Professorship at California. Uh, State University in North Vikas Malhotra. Bhagwan Kunthuna Jain Scholarship Program at Saritos Community College. Lee Ann McElroy, she is a vegan too. Bhagwan Muni Subrat Swami Endowed Professorship, University of Illinois, Champaign Urbana. Mickey Che, interim, she is a PhD finishing from Duke University. And <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi's oldest son, uh, oldest grandson. Rajiv Gandhi, Rajmohan Gandhi. He is a professor teaching uh, non-violence for the last many years at this University of uh, uh, Illinois. And when he established this chair, he was the speaker. Next one. Next, next slide. Can you move? Stuck? Okay. Gurudev Kanji Swami, again, two, two university programs at the University of Connecticut and also University of Florida, Gainesville. Bhagwan Supasana Professorship, California, Colorado State University, University of Colorado, Denver. This we established very quickly, within four or five months it took us. And Dr. Stephen Vos, who was at Florida International University, he has now come to this place. Bhagwan Padm Prabhu Swami at University of South Florida Tampa, that's vacant, will be advertised pretty soon. Next, next slide. I want to give you a quick, um, so that you can connect with Bhagwan Aranath Endowed uh, Postdoctoral Fellowship at uh, Emory University, very top famous university. It's vacant, it will be advertised. Alka Dalal Endowed uh, uh, Postdoctoral Fellowship at Rutgers University in New Jersey. Dr. Anil Mundra, who did his PhD from University of Chicago. He has been appointed that position. Bhagwan Shatinath at University of Toronto in Canada. Dr. Helene Jokairi, okay. She did a PhD from Ghent University in Jainism. She, by the way, uh, uh, Nitin, she's very good and scholar of uh, Kannada language too. Okay, definitely be okay. in touch with us, sir. Yes, yes. absolute great scholar in Kannada language, doing a lot of work, okay. Next, next slide, please. Next. Quickly, you will be bored when I say keep on. Bhagwan Chandra Prabhu at Claremont School of Theology. And uh, it's uh, Dr. Vinu Mehta. Bhagwan Vasupuja Swami at University of Pittsburgh is vacant. Bhagwan Abhinandan Lectureship in Jain Studies at University of California, UCLA, very top university. Anita Hoos. Shri Kanji Swami, uh, 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 postdoctoral fellowship at, at you know, Arizona State University in at, at Tempe, Arizona, and Dr. Nandita Punji. Okay, next. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Bhagwan Shantina lectureship at Cal State University in Fullerton. We were doing this for the last four or five years. Andrew Bridges, he's also a very good practice scholar. Bhagwan Women are Lectureship at the University of California, Santa Barbara, Jonathan Dickstein, Graduate Study Program at Claire's Mount School of Theology, Dr. Shushma Par, our own is also teaching graduate level. Uh, Emory University, Atlanta, Dr. Ellen Goff, 
Okay, she did her PhD many years ago from uh, uh, from Yale, and she was also attended very earlier uh, IASJS in uh, in uh, Delhi. Bhagwan Neminath a program in Jain studies at University uh, University of Connecticut. Okay, next please. Now, Shal Dr. Shailendra Palviya is a Jain. He established last year. Uh, annual lecture series in fact, twice a year uh, under his name with a very large donation. And this is forever. And we have provided $50,000 annual support to Jain study program at University of Chicago. University of Chicago is a very world famous university. Many, many Nobel laureates are there. So we are involving the Jain community of Chicago with this university. And hopefully at some day, uh, we will maybe establish a full-fledged chair at the Dr. Sarah Pierce Taylor. She is also a scholar of, pra and, uh, of Kannad. Okay. She's been teaching there. Bhagwan Mahavi annual guest lecturer at Rice University in Houston. Next. Shrimad Rajan Fellowship to P four PhD students at the University of California, Riverside. Four, four, uh, two students are doing PhD over there. It takes about five to seven years to do a PhD here. So we are providing them four fellowships at $40,000 each. International School for Jain Studies, we already talked, doing a wonderful job, marvelous job. Next slide. Bhagwan Sheetal Nath Post, Dr. Fellowship in Jain Studies, University of Toronto, already we talked. Yeah, where are we in Canada? So we are just not all concentrating only in America. This we did about three years ago. And for the last 30 years, Rupalal Jain annual lecture series at University of Toronto has been going on. Similarly, Dr. Chandra Mohan Jain annual lecture at University of Western Ontario at London, uh, Ontario has been going on in Canada. So Jain people have been active in some way. Next slide, please. Where are we in Belgium? Belgium, Ghent University. They've been teaching Jainism and offering classes and courses for over 70 years, seven zero. They have facilities for practically most of the languages of India, Prakrit and Sanskrit and Hindi and Gujarati. So there, Dr. Eva D. Clark, absolutely a fantastic Jain scholar. Uh, she is the chair and they offer PhD program. In fact, quite a few scholars from there who did PhD, they are being occupied, they are being you know, uh, uh, hired at some of these places where we are creating. Doctor, we created last year, Acharya Mahapragya Professorship in Jain Studies at this university in uh, Ghent. And Dr. Ven uh, Tina Wekman, she gave a beautiful talk yesterday about the Jain diaspora in uh, South Africa and how during the last 100 years, their migrations, okay? This university also offered, offers an MA in Prakrit studies online and in person. Now, Germany, Tubingen University, Dr. Claire Mays, she is there. She spent two years in, 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 in Mysore, okay, many years ago, okay? And uh, she is again, she did a PhD many years ago at uh, uh, from Ghent. And for five years, she was teaching Sanskrit and also Jainism at the University of Texas in Austin. So she moved to Tubingen because she wanted to establish a department at this university. Tubingen is a very famous board university. Next slide, please. In UK, very old oriental school, uh, SOAS, University of London, Professor Peter Frugal been teaching Jainism for many, many years. And also, of course, PhD student. We are sponsoring PhD students there. We are, uh, since 2004, 2024, we, we are giving them money. And also we have, every year they hold a very annual conference in, in uh, March. This year it is going to be held, I think from next week, next week because of COVID it was not done. And I think Professor Amparna is going there, okay? And we are funding that as well, okay? Next slide, please. These are the 11, 12 students 
who are doing PhD in Jainism, University of Florida, Vino Mehta, University of Florida, University of Chicago, Yale, John Hopkins, University of California, Riverside. So we need to keep on this pipeline continuous so that we have scholars being trained and so that we can keep on opening more and more chairs, okay? More and more position. Next. Many, many universities in US and Canada regularly offer courses and classes in several languages, including Sanskrit. And for Prakrit, we established Bhagwan Mahavir, full year scholarship to study Prakrit in India under IASGS. So we are offering 10 to 12 lakh rupees we are spending on each scholar. So in 2019 and 20, there were three scholars from University of Chicago and SOAS. Again, three scholars and they just finished by the way, only about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, these were, came from US and, and India. The two scholars in 2023 from US and uh, India. And also right now we are offering, in fact, probably tomorrow, we will be selecting the next batch of three to four scholars who will be coming to India to spend nine months to a year to study Prakrit. And again, on each student, we are spending about 10 to 12 lakh rupees. Next, please. Now, these are uh, five, uh, seven scholars who are teaching Prakrit to these people, uh, which I just mentioned, which you have started Bhagwan Mahabir Fellowship in Prakrit. Uh, Professor Jagatram Bhattacharya from uh, Vishwa Bharti University of Shanti Niketan, Professor D.P. Sharma from University of Ahmedabad, Kamal Sogani from Jaipur, Uday Chan Jain, Prem Suman Jain Udaipur, and Nalini Joshi, like this. So these people spend time with these three, four scholars that we hire, we bring them to India, and uh, it's a full-fledged program, very highly organized. Next talk, next program, next slide, please. As I mentioned, when we started offering these last 10 years, many other universities say, wow, we are missing Jainism. So on their own, they started these programs. 30 places, our own, where we funded. And now at least 17 more universities are offering on their own. This is a big list that you will see. Next slide, please. Same thing. You see all over, you know, this, this mushrooming, this catching up. Next, you know, next slide, please. Brazil. This is very interesting. Uh, Dr. Patricia de Souza and Manish has been handling that. Coming to India to attend IAHS. She is coming, in fact, this month. She will be there for about two months and to learn not only Jainism, but she will, the language in and uh, the language in Brazil is uh, Portuguese, Portuguese. So how do you teach Jainism when the language is completely different? We found uh, Dr. Patricia de Souza and her professor Ozarski, they, mo they both know English very, very well, okay? And Patricia is coming to attend five weeks of IES jazz in India in, uh, uh, in Pune and other places. She's coming, I think, within two weeks. Manish has made the uh, travel reservation. What her role in two months will be, I get to know more about Jainism. She will take the lecture notes from Shugan Jain, which we have been offering for the last 16, 17 years. And she will translate over there when under Shugan Jainji from English to uh, Portuguese, English to Portuguese. And in doing so, she has already advertised this course in the University of Bra uh, that Bra Brazil, uh, it's a Christian university. She will be offering this course in, in August or September when she goes back to uh, from India to Brazil. Already will be offering, okay? It's on books. And I think uh, Manish probably know she has already enrolled some students. This is how we get started. In India, two day, only uh, July 9 and 10, there will be two-day international symposium on dating of Bhagwan Mahavi's birth and nirvana. There is a big controversy by the by Western scholars. They put Mahavir 
at least 50 years after what we Egyptians have agreed to, or maybe 100 years. So we have a very extensive uh, this symposium. If you some of you can come there, uh, please let me know. We will be glad to receive you. It's on July 9 and 10 on campus. Okay, uh, at uh, Pune, uh, Naval Virayatan in Pune. Okay. Two years and a half ago, we had this uh, international seminar three days on history of ancient Jain mathematics. Okay. And this was supposed to be at, uh, at MIT in person, but because of COVID, we could not uh, arrange that. So 50 papers were done, were presented over a period of three days, 50 papers and uh, online. So out of that, a uh, very extensive proceeding is coming out, hopefully this month or next month. If this will be the first book, okay? It will be the history of, an, history of ancient Jain mathematics. That's the title of this historical book that will be coming out. Next slide, please. Now, and our chairs, where are we? Where are, where are we? Uh, uh, by the way, let me. I mentioned to you that we have quite a few chairs which are vacant. So very soon, in the next two to three months, following positions will be advertised. University of Wisconsin Medicine Chair, University of California State University Chair, University of California at Santa Barbara Chair, Endowed Professorship, University of Illinois at Champaign, University of South Florida, Embry University, Atlanta, University of Pittsburgh, and probably maybe one or two more. Why I mentioned specifically, never in, in the history of Jainism, never in the history of Jainism, the academia, there were so many job opportunities, okay? And I am requesting all those people who are online now, please encourage Indian scholars to apply to this position, okay? Many times either they are not aware of, or they do not know how to put their applications together. Dr. Manish Mehta, many of these people will help them because they have to present them pr pr very properly. So take this challenge, please. Connect with those scholars in India, okay? Who have done a lot of research work, who have done publication, who have a world record, who have uh, refereed journals, and uh, who know English, okay? Of course, the uh, other language will not work. So I ask them to apply. We don't want all of these all these positions to be filled by outsiders only if we can bring some our own as well. Okay. Next slide, please. Next slide. In India, very, very recent initiative. Okay, now you mentioned Nitin that there are so many chairs are dying in India, probably already dead. Okay. We have to look at why, what happened. Okay, we know some of those reasons. Of course, I don't know all of those, but we are taking a fresh start. And first start is Banaras Hindu University. Okay, we went to visit them about uh, 27th of April, not two weeks long ago, met with the vice chancellor, gave them a very extensive proposal. Roop Rekha, the vision that we do here, okay, and Manish wrote that beautiful pr uh, proposal, Manish Mehta. So we have agreed and we have also provided financial support. Okay. I think our uh, financial support is uh, $45,000 per year, okay, which is probably 35 lakh rupees per year. Okay. This is as a start. So this will be st continue for three years. And I want to give you an idea. After three years, the university will get the approval from UGC, University Grants Commission, to have this chair for permanent, okay? The salary and all the benefits of this chair will be paid by the government of India, okay? So very different concept we can talk about. Similarly, on 28th of April last month, we went to Nalanda International University, Bihar, we made the same offer. Their uh, proposal came only about three, four days ago, and we probably are working on that one as well. We send them a reply. Israel, Hebrew University, 
one of the top most universities where there are so many Nobel laureates. We have been working with them. My hope is that within a week or two, we may establish it. Not certain, but I am hoping because we are working with one, one GN donor who is just about ready to sign. So till it is signature, then we cannot say, but we will be hopefully within a week, we might establish a chair there as well. UK, England, University of Birmingham. By the way, many, many years ago, I did my PhD from University of Birmingham and they approached us, why not you do the chair at the university? We have had a couple of meetings with them and if their proposal looks good, then we probably work on that as well. So you can see Europe, Brazil, Brazil, India, uh, European countries, American countries, American universities, Canada, uh, England, uh, Belgium, and Germany, and many other places we are approaching. Next slide, please. <clears throat> These are the following universities we have started talking. <clears throat> all of them will not happen. We do not have enough money to, to create chairs in all of those places, but we have started significant dialogue. University of California, Berkeley, University of Chicago, University of Virginia, Boston University, Pace University, University of Florida. You can see a big list. So we are not stopping that we, that we just say, hey, let's wait for five years. No, we will keep on moving where the opportunity is right. Next slide, please. Now, very quickly, within the next few minutes, two, three minutes, nearly all programs, as I mentioned earlier, are in the names of the Tirthankars. Nearly all faculty, not all of them, most of them are IESJS alumni. So imagine if IESJS were not there, we will not be talking all this, okay? 70% faculty are women. Okay, this is something again unique. Five or six faculty are born Jains. All the faculty are vegetarians or vegan. In fact, most of them are vegans. All the programs are non-sectarian. They cover complete all aspects of Jainism. And they are very well received. And most of the faculty know Prakash, Sanskrit, Hindi, and Gujarati. If not fluently, at least they know. And we are training more. The, Significant, uh, Nathan, which I want to mention to you is, universities agreed to pay the salary and the benefits to the professor in perpetuity forever. Okay, this probably is very different than the chair that you talked about hmm, uh, in India because the donation, uh, you know, ran out of money hmm, and then there was no, no support. So, and the total, in, in, uh, in, uh, investment by the JN community is about 150 crore rupees and universities have matched that equal amount. So they have put in, if we give them $1, they match with $2. That's the arrangement we need to do. And everywhere the local JN Sangs are involved. Okay, we don't do anything without local JN Sang being their part of it. Next one, please. Only one or two more slides left. So <clears throat> next one. All positions are for Jain studies, not for any other studies. Uh, positions are for perpetuity. And again, I mentioned that the universities pay the salary, okay, forever. So next slide, please. Next, okay. Uh, one, quickly. It's, we have made just a small beginning. And we are not going to stop. Hopefully, we will double this next five years. So in next one to three years, all positions will be filled. Not all of them are. And when they become fully filled and they become functional, then they will start doing a lot of research, teaching, publication, symposium, seminar. By the way, if you went to Google about 10 years ago and looked at under the title Jain books, you probably may not find at that time probably more than 100. Now there are quite a few coming out, okay? Even last few years, you know, quite a few have coming out because of these scholars, many other places. International school, we already talked about, okay? It did a significant job, including attendees from Pakistan, from Brazil, from you. Oh, by the way, I did not mention about Pakistan, okay? Yesterday, Nathan, you had the 
uh, Professor Hamid. Okay. And if I can just take one second only, that not only we are supporting Professor Hamid with whom we are working for many years, and we are also funding uh, through Florida International University. You, you got a taste of what he is doing yesterday. There's Multan at the University of Bahawalpur in Pakistan. There is Professor Zahib, Zahib there, and he wanted to teach Jainism in Urdu. And the reason is that most of his students, they come from Madarsa and they only know Urdu. They don't know English. So how do you teach Jainism? Hmm? And there's not any material practically in Urdu about Jainism. And whatever may be from the old time, 15, 20, 30 books, they are not a representation and how do we offer a full-fledged course in Jainism? Hmm? So on his own, because he has a good uh, vocabulary and good knowledge of English, he prepared a 350 page manuscript, Introduction to Jainism course okay, in Urdu. He sent that to us about a month ago. He said, I want you to look at and approve that the quality and content so that I do not represent uh, in a wrongful way. Where do you find scholars, Jain scholars and who know Urdu? Okay. I know Urdu a little bit because I am that old, but I am not a scholar of Urdu. So we found three scholars in India who are in their 90s and who knew Urdu very well. So this manuscript was sent to them and two of them have looked at it and their feedback is that it's very well written with few changes. So probably within a week or two, I'm talking very quickly, this manuscript will be fully reviewed and those notes will be sent to Professor Zoheb and he will uh, update the, the, the manuscript and he's planning to publish 500 to 1000 books, publish, okay, copies of this uh, by, a, uh, by a publisher and offer this course probably next uh, three, four months. So we are making wherever in road, not only uh, Professor Hamid, but also at many other places where we find the opportunities. So next please. So I think I've spoken enough and I would say we want the Jain community to, to come together. There should be no boundaries between India and uh, USA. There are so many things that you can provide us, whether it's books, whether it's scholars, whether facilities, whether these scholars come to India, you can host them around, take them around, show them many, many things. So I think with that, I really appreciate, thank you. And I quote there from Bill and Melinda Gate, the chance to make a difference is not just someday, it is now and today. And that's where it offers the gen opportunity. Thank you, thank you, Jai Jirinder. Thank you, Dr. Sulekji. Uh, it was a very inspiring and yet eye-opening uh, presentation. A uh, lot of it was very technical, very co content-based, while all of these details, uh, uh, this doesn't matter how many centers we are opening with different names. What matters is the vision behind it. I think this whole uh, strength, this whole courage, and this whole determination and efforts the community is putting together in envisioning a brighter future for the Jan community. I think in last 2,000, 3,000 years, uh, we've, we've had different expressions in our indigenous language, say Sanskrit, Prakrit, Ardhamagdi. We've had uh, people who've learned it, who practiced it as uh, uh, Shravaks, Shravikas, or uh, Sadhus. And when maximum kitna gayo, they went down to South India, they went down to probably <coughs> parts of extended Asia. While uh, what would be magic, like, you know, uh, if you if you go through the stories of our uh, uh, Jain uh, scriptures, there is something called Akasha Gamini Vidya or Akasha Gamini Labdi. Now this <laughs> Labdi is achieved after tons and tons of uh, penance and uh, ek andar se, ek, uh, internal purity when it comes out, the Muni is able to like, you know, fly in the air 
and reach out to different places. Yes, one for pilgrimage and second for Prabhavna. Sashans Prabhavna for uh, reaching out to many other souls on the <clears throat> globe. And I think uh, this connection, this connection which we are creating as a network with different countries uh, is going to do that purpose. And now what was uh, magic or what was uh, Siddhi a uh, few hundred years ago is now the technology. And uh, with the imbibing technology, connectivity, and everything around it, uh, I, I think, you know, raising 150 crores in education is itself uh, a very big achievement because a mandir to make a mandir for 5 or 50 crores in one hour. Like alone in Chennai, alone, I'm, I'm in Chennai, we have 120 Jain Shwetamba temples and another fight and Digamba temples. And all of them are uh, built after like, you know, a lot of crores of donation. But, you know, uh, creating that mindset that if we want to create the Jain community of tomorrow, people who are the face of uh, the, uh, the knowledge which Jain culture has to share to the world is only by education. And we thank so much Sulekji Jain and Manish Ji Mehta, both of you, to present here on uh, 20, 20th anniversary celebrations of Jan Heritage Center. So on behalf of JHC, I really appreciate uh, and acknowledge and we seek your blessings to reach out to more and more people. Thank you, Sulekji. Uh, Thank you, Manish. Uh, Antariksh, number one, when you establish the Jan Gyan Mandir, there is no maintenance cost. Okay, please remember that when you establish a mandir, there is a lot of maintenance cost, whether it is electricity, whether air conditioning, whether the food and food was repair. Okay, but these chairs do not require any maintenance cost, they are forever. Okay, so these are the two differences that way. The second, I want to acknowledge here Dr. Jyoti Rathi, she will be speaking next month at that uh, uh, the symposium that we have on dating of Bhagwan Mahavir Nirvan and, uh, uh, and his birth, okay? She has prepared an absolutely fantastic paper. My gosh, she sent me last week and it is full of so much knowledge. So Druti, thank you. Uh, 